Hallelujah. Well, while you're sitting, go ahead and give God another hand clap for me. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. See, just, just when you buy in distractions, that's when the enemy wants to fool you to make you think that everything going wrong. Hi, your name is all is well. All is well. Well, tell them like you mean it. Tell them all is well. All is well. Yeah, all is well. Amen. Hey, well, this morning, I promise, as I, we always do, that we won't be before you long. And I know I was going to get a big chuckle out of that. But God is still good. Amen? Amen. Well, in your Bibles, let's turn to the book of Genesis on this morning. The book of Genesis. Hallelujah, the book of Genesis. And let's start with verse chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Beginning with the 15th through the 17th verse to start off with. Amen. Before we read this morning, I've got a question to ask. How many people expect anything to happen here this morning? Well, let me tell you, before we even read the scripture, let me tell you where it begins. Confident expectation does not begin with what you do. Confident expectation begins with how you think. So I want you to think expectation this morning. Now that'll have nothing to do with your neighbor. It'll have nothing to do with the person sitting next to you, behind you, or in front of you. This all has to do with how you think. So hunt your neighbor this morning and say, I'm thinking big. I'm thinking big. Yeah, think big. I believe that if you are not or think you cannot be blessed, it's been because of your thinking and nothing else. God is a good God, amen? And God does not bless you based on how good you've been. God blesses you because of how good Jesus is. And the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. So hunt your neighbor again and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Now we mentioned to you on last Sunday about blessings being on the head of the righteous. And if you're the righteous this morning, blessings are right over your head. But you can't think negative, you got to think blessing. We'll say it again. You can't think negative, you got to think blessing. Anything that gets in between you and your thinking, if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, that's the devil. If you've been praying and all of a sudden something told you you can't have what you prayed for, that's the devil. I said, that's the devil. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, are we ready? Yes. Okay, let's kick this thing off. Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of, eat of it, you shall surely die. Everybody say, that's what God said. That's what God said. Let's go to chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, beginning with verse 1, and we're going to read through verse 6. And it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? 
And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Amen. I want to teach this morning from the subject, thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. Thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. I mentioned to you beforehand that confident expectation does not begin anywhere but in your mind. The scenario that we just read about, Adam and Eve and God and their conversations, first began with God giving them a commandment not to eat of a certain tree. This was something that God spoke to Adam and told him, this don't do lest you surely die. Then in the third chapter we read where the serpent came and he basically said this, if you allow me to paraphrase, he basically said this, God lying to y'all. He said, God lying to y'all. God, God knows that if you eat from that tree, you're going to be just as smart as he is. Thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. I submit to you this morning that the only avenue that the enemy has into your life is through thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. If you came here this morning and you expected some, something good from God, pay no attention to the enemy when he tries to tell you that it is dependent upon how good you've been. You missed a good time to say amen. amen. Because whoever you are, including me this morning, there are times in my life when, I, when the enemy tries to trick me to believe that God will only bless me if I'm good. No, God will only bless you when you expect him to bless you. This whole scenario here is a strategy of the enemy that he's been using since Adam and Eve. Same thing he did there is what he's doing to us today. Especially when you hear a, a message that talks about how good God is. And all of a sudden the enemy will look at you and say to you things like this. Yeah, but. Come on, anybody been there? He'll say, yeah, but. And all of a sudden he has you, number one, living in your past, trying to dictate your future. And all you got is today. The Apostle Paul said this in Philippians. You don't have to go there. He says, this one thing I do, forgetting all the things that are behind me, I press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Let me tell you something. If you are looking for God to bless you, you are in a press. And it's not that God's trying to keep it from you. The enemy does not want you blessed. The enemy has a strategy that he has formed against you individually. Everybody look down the road and say, not, this ain't about you. Yeah, this is about your personal relationship with God. But unfortunately, what he does is he uses people, places, things, animals, goldfish, dogs, birds, and cats, anything not like God to try to speak to you. Situations will talk to you. Everybody say thoughts, thoughts ideas, ideas, and suggestions. Now, Romans 12, 
Go there, Romans 12, 1 and 2. We're going to do a little moving, I promise. Yes, yeah, I'm, well, I'm doing, I got good time. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Everybody say, my mind. My mind. Every now and then, your mind will go places that it don't need to go. And the Bible says that the only way that a believer will grow is or be transformed is by renewing his mind. You need, you need to. Don't expect God to do it. God has given us a command to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. In other words, get out the old information and put in new information. Amen? Amen. Now, most of us have this tendency to think that when I, we say spirit, that is talking about the Holy Spirit. No, he's talking about your spirit. Everybody say, my spirit. my spirit. God, when you became a believer, God came and began to live and reside inside of your spirit. In other words, you get promptings, you get leadings from your soulish realm, which is attached to your soul, I mean to your spirit. Oh, come on. Your soul is attached to your spirit. If you want to wonder how come you got them crazy thoughts going on in your head, it's because of your soulish realm. It has been programmed by people, places, and things that you have been hanging around, and you want to know how come you say what you say. So that's why God says, be ye transformed or changed by the renewing of your mind. Now the mind, again, we, Joyce Meyer he wrote a book about it. The mind is the battlefield. Most of us have this tendency to say, well, you fighting the devil. Well, what you're actually saying is that you don't have control of your mind. Anybody ever try to think of something and all of a sudden you get another thought? I, I mentioned this to them in Sunday school. I gave them like a preview. Let me ask you this question. Where does your thoughts come from? I know. No, that's where, they, that's where they end up. But where do they come from? No, I'm going to let you ponder that for a minute. Where do your thoughts come from? If you're in Sunday school, you ought to know that. They come from everywhere. They come from in you, out, out of you, around you, through everybody else, through stuff that you hear, through the people you run around, through the places you've been. All of a sudden, thoughts just come. They'll pop up out of nowhere. You can be driving your car, going on vacation, and all of a sudden a thought will pop in your head. Did I leave the stove on? Where did the thought come from? It just popped in your head. That's the trick of the enemy that he uses to keep you unfocused on the Word of God. That's why he says you got to get in the Word all the time in order to renew your mind. I want to think like God. And see, here's what the enemy, if anybody in here has ever said that, I want to think like God, then the enemy has a response for you. He'll tell you something like this. Don't raise your hand if you ever said it. You say something like that. Yeah, but I'm only human. Now he's got you thinking you, you're just a human. No, you're more than a human. You are a supernatural being. If he can keep you into thinking that you're human, you expect to mess up. Oh, let me calm. See, that, that gets me excited. You expect to mess up as long as you think you're human. And then all of a sudden, God's word comes back to you when he says something like this. And all of a sudden, you try to make excuses. He says this, be holy as I am holy. See, it got real quiet here when I said that. Let me tell you why. Because now you think holiness is unattainable. But the Bible says, be holy as he is holy. Let me tell you something. You as holy right now as you ever going to get. I know that's hard to receive. 
I know it is. And, and I know why. Let me tell you why. Because you're thinking. Because you, even though you said it just now, you're thinking about all that old stuff you done learned about uh, women with long dresses and... Whoa. The room. The room. The room. The room. The room. The room. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, Romans 12, 1, 2, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Amen. Let's start with verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I mean, I'm sorry, chapter 10, beginning with verse 3. He says this, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Listen, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Oh man, that, that one's heavy. That one's heavy because it says you can bring every thought into captivity. The late Kenneth Hagin said it like this, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can keep them from making a nest in your hair. Because you're going to have some weird thoughts. Right now, if I were a mind reader, and I could read some of y'all's thoughts, and told you I was going to put it up on the screen, most of us in here be doing that church thing. I'm on my way out because he reading my mail. Everybody has bad thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Even while you're sitting here right now, anybody ever, ever attempted to pray? Yeah, you, attempt, you attempted to pray, and all of a sudden you got thoughts that, where in the world did that come from? Well, that is a satanic distraction to keep you off the Word of God. That's why, now, this ain't a rule of thumb, but let me tell you this. Whenever you pray, have your Bible. Have your Bible. Why? That whenever you get distracted, go right here and start reading. This is the only deterrent that you have from strange thoughts popping in your head. In other words, you replace one thought with another thought. That's the only way it happens. But, that you, but most of us go with your thoughts. Oh, I'm going to say that again. Most of us go with our thoughts. But notice he says, bring every thought into captivity. Now here's a tidbit of information for you this morning. Every thought that you have has an emotion attached to it. I'm going to say it again. Every thought that you have has an emotion attached to it. I gave an example this morning in Sunday school again. Anybody ever says, they made me so bad? Well, you, well, that makes them almost like a magician. If they can make you mad, you need to, get, you need to cut the puppet strings of people making you mad. Now, let me tell you why you got mad. You got mad because of what you thought they said or you thought they did, and you got mad and started thinking. I said, you got mad and started thinking. So now you got mad attached to an, emo uh, an emotion, mad attached to your thinking. So now, in order to get unmad, I can't think about what I'm mad about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, see y'all. Does that sound hard? No. Hunt your neighbor and say, think about what you're thinking about. Think about what you're thinking about. Because most of the time, anybody ever been worried in here? Oh, yeah. Anybody ever been anxious in here? Yeah. I guarantee you it's because of what you was thinking. Yeah. 
It wasn't the sing that made you mad. It was what you were thinking about the sing that made you mad or anxious. Hallelujah. In a relationship. How many of you ask your spouse something like this? What you thinking? <laughs> and they told you, and they told you a lie. They said there's nothing. You lying, you were thinking something. If you ain't thinking, you, if you wasn't thinking something before I asked you what you thinking, you thinking something now. Everybody say, think about what you think about. The only avenue, again, the enemy has into your life is thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. He pulls it on Adam and Eve, and he pulls it on us today. So what, what's the remedy? How, how do we settle this whole thing? If my blessings are contingent upon my thinking, then how do I attract my blessings to me with the thought, kind of thoughts I'm having? Say this with me. Change the channel. Change the channel. If you are looking at your TV and you are looking at a station that you don't like, what do you do? Change Say it like you mean it. Change yeah. In your mind. If you're thinking a thought, you don't want to think, what do you do? Change, Change the channel. You start thinking about the goodness of God. The Bible says, if your mind is stayed on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. Yeah. Say, change the channel. Change. Unfortunately, most of us like some of the channels that our mind is on. And let me tell you how I know. Because you say stuff like this. That's just the way I am. Say, change the channel. Change the channel. Listen to this. You can't watch your thinking, but you can watch your emotions. You can't watch your thinking, but you can watch your emotions. Why? Because I just told you every emotion, every thought has an emotion attached. So if you find yourself getting uncomfortable, ask yourself, what am I thinking about? This is what you need to do early in the morning. Anybody ever woke up early in the morning? Yeah. And your mind ain't on no, no kind of Jesus? Yeah. It's on everything that's going to happen to you today. Most of the time when I get up, the first thing, even before I get up, I'm thinking restoration. That's why I call it the restoration experience. Somehow it's, it's all up in my head. Everybody say, change the channel. Change. And I have to change the channel in order for me to have some fellowship with God for the morning. And even while I'm praying, some of y'all just pop up like that. Just pop up. By the way, let me, let me, let me introduce y'all to a new couple we have in the, in the sanctuary this morning. Mr. and Mrs. Davis, y'all stand up. I'm having you stand up because you look, you look like... Uh, you look like you're about to fall asleep, so I've, I've had you stand up. Hallelujah. I'm trying to, uh, yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Davis. I, I had her stand up because she looked like she's about to fall asleep. And, and I, didn't, I didn't want all y'all to have to stand up because she was falling asleep. Hallelujah. So give them a hand, praise. Okay, here, here, here's, the first principle is this. You can't watch your thinking, but you can watch your emotions. The second principle is this. Recognize your thinking by your emotions. Yeah. Recognize your thinking by your emotions. You feel in some kind of way. Anybody, I don't know what's wrong. Anybody ever said this? I don't know what's wrong with me. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't nothing wrong. You know, everything going good. I, I just feel uncomfortable. Well, you need to ask yourself what you're thinking about. What are you thinking about? 
Why you sit here right now this morning, what you thinking about? Well, Pastor Joe, we try to listen to you. Oh, no, no, okay. Well, you ought to be thinking about God then. I have sat right on that front row. And as Irvin's preaching, or anybody who's up here, and my mind will go places, baby, that you just don't know. That's why I'm glad I got a front row seat. Because sometimes I turn around, Sometimes I turn around and some of the things I see. Yeah. See what happened? Uh, we had somebody just walk in and nobody was listening to me. I saw it happen. I was sitting right here, standing right here, and I'm talking, and, and the young lady walked in, and everybody did like this. And what were you thinking when you saw her? tell me, I, 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 you know, most of the time when your attention goes and you get unfocused, you have, cra and I guarantee you, most of you who look don't know what you were thinking when you looked. Right. <laughs> Hunt your neighbor again and say, think about what you're thinking about. Think about, what you think about. Yeah, and just totally took her off her square. <laughs> Amen. Now, here's the third one. Emotions follow thinking. Right. Fight it, baby. Fight it. Fight it. Hunt your, hunt your unless you fall asleep, too. Emotions follow thinking. If you're thinking something, it's going to have an emotion right along with it. That's how come people can make you mad. You can be sitting on this front row having a conversation with somebody else and another person can be over there and all they have to do is just hear their name. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you start thinking. And then the more you think, the madder you get. I don't know why my name all up in their mouth. I can't wait to ask what, what y'all... And then... You'll eat, and if you bold and brash enough, before their conversation is over, you've been all up in their face. What? 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 <laughs> and they could have been saying something nice. Oh, we was only saying how nice you were. It better be. <laughs> Think about what you're thinking about. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, listen. This is not rocket science. It's something that everybody say it's doable. it's doable. And the reason I know it's doable because Jesus said it was doable. Yeah. Donna read it this morning when he said, think on these things. In other words, he's giving you what to think about. Anything that does not, does not fall in that category, don't think about it. You can change the channel to something you want to think about that does not lead you to do something crazy because a thought always comes before doing crazy. Let me ask you this question. How many people have, have had adverse behavior and you thought about it before you did it? Oh, that's everybody in here. I don't know who you're playing. You thought about it before you did it. And in the courtroom, it's called premeditated murder. In other words, you plotted and schemed before you killed them. And most of our thoughts are premeditated, especially when you want to do something that you know ain't supposed to be right. You'll think about it, and you'll think about it, and you'll think about it some more, and the more thought you give to it, the stronger the urge becomes for you to do it. That's why when, you're in, when you hear somebody in the pulpit and they're telling you what not to do, most of the time you will do what they say not do. Why? Because they set your thinking mechanism on something that they wanted to think about. 
We, we did that in here. Little did you know we did it in here. But that was a few months when Irvin and I were on this thing about smoking. Anybody remember back then? Yeah. And I guarantee you when we started talking about it, instead of you smoking one pack, you started smoking two. Yeah. Only because we placed the thought in your head that smoking was bad and because it was bad your soulish realm equal the bad which now control your behavior oh, ask your neighbor what you thinking about what you thinking about oh come on now most of the time we, uh, most of us have this whole plot going in our life what you gonna do you got all these thoughts going in your mind the temptations even wrote a song about it it's just my imagination running wild with me you imagine things and you even see it. Oh, come on, you ain't, you ain't here. I said, sometimes you even see it. You don't realize that you're exercising a principle of God that says call those things that be not as though they were because you'll see it before you get it. Okay, that didn't go over too good. Here's number four. Whenever your emotions are uncomfortable... Ask yourself, what am I thinking? I said, whenever your emotions are uncomfortable, you got some unease, you got some uneasiness going on on the inside of you, you need to ask yourself, what am I thinking? Anybody ever felt that uneasiness in the pit of your stomach? Well, Hunter Davis said, don't do it. If you got peace about it, if you got peace in the middle of your belly, it's okay. If you got uneasiness, listen, don't do it. Girl, I almost cussed him out. You didn't feel good about it. <clears throat> and I see, I, 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 oh yeah, I heard it, Father. And some of you in there say, yeah, it did feel good. <laughs> I had to get, or you say something like, I had to get that off my chest. <laughs> Think about what you're thinking about. Listen. Okay, good time. Listen. When the enemy attacks you that way, it's not an attack on you. It's an attack on the character of God. This fight ain't between you and the devil. This fight is between the devil and God. He doesn't know that he's already been defeated, so he has to show victory when you do something crazy. The same thing he, the enemy did to Adam and Eve, again, it is the same thing he's doing to us. He attacked God's character. God must have been lying to y'all. That, that was an attack on God's character. So when you want to do right, that's why the enemy wants you to do wrong so bad because you are representative of God. Yeah. And when you do bad, that's why people tell you and you call yourself a Christian. It's an attack on God's character because most of us don't even care. Well, I'm going to show you what a Christian is. <laughs> Yeah, ain't that, ain't that way we do sometimes? Well, I'm going to show you what a Christian is. Be at church Sunday. <laughs> I, 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 dare you, I dare you be at church Sunday. I'm going to show you how, I'm going to show you a Christian. Amen, somebody. See, I like, I like to gut punch you. I like to hit you right where you at. Because, see, most of us struggle with that kind of stuff. And, you know, and then we act all spiritual. Yeah. And most of us in yet, including me, have gone through that kind of stuff. Sometimes I get around Urban and he just makes me so mad. Now, did y'all hear what I just said? Yeah, you just said it. Yeah, thank you. See, and it wasn't him that made me mad. It was what I thought that made me mad. 
just because you don't agree with somebody, don't, don't take the bait. Oh, let me say that again, baby. Don't take the bait. Because that's all it is, is a bait of Satan. He wants you to attack. He is attacking the character of God through you. You are God's representative, and he's attacking God through you. Okay? Go to Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23 and 7. <clears throat> now I get, to, I get to do a little bit of te- little more teaching here, so please pay some, some attention here. Proverbs 23, 7, and he says this. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Now, if you've got a Bible... And it says, for as a man thinketh in his heart, comma, so is he. I submit to you that the comma is in the wrong place. Because you can't think with your heart. Anybody here ever thought with your heart? No. The comma should be behind thinks. For as a man thinks, comma, in his heart, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The reason why the the translator had a hard time putting the comma in the right place is because the heart here represents your human spirit. And along with your human spirit, as I mentioned before, is an attachment called the soul. And the soul is comprised of five areas, your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, and your imagination. And it's attached to your human spirit. Now the Bible says the only thing that can separate that is the Word of God. In the book of Hebrews, in chapter 4 I believe it is, you don't don't have to go there, but it says the Word of God is sharper and quick, or it's alive. Able to divide asunder soul from spirit. Anybody get it? So the reason a translator had a hard time is because the part of your soulish realm, the mind, is actually attached to your spirit. So that's why he says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But he's actually talking about the soulish compartment that's attached to your spirit. Everybody understand? So that's why I'm saying the comma should be, for as a man, what? Thinks in his heart, so is he. So you are a product of what you've been thinking. Woo-hoo. I said you are a product of what you've been thinking. One of the favorite scriptures that people usually refer to here is Proverbs 18.21, where he says death and life is in the power of the tongue. So have you been speaking life to your life or death to your life? I guarantee you right now that the reason you are where you are is because of what you've been saying out your mouth. I ain't going to ever make it. Yep, okay, you never will. I ain't going to ever have no money. Oh, you probably never will. I'm always sick. Yeah, you probably always will be. I'm so broke I can't pay attention. Yeah, you're probably right. Everybody say, if I'm feeling it, don't say it. Oh, there's an addendum to that. Say it again. If I'm feeling it, don't say it. Change the channel. So instead of saying what you ain't, Say what God says you are. Everybody say this to me. I'm rich. I'm I'm prosperous. I'm prosperous. I'm delivered. I'm I'm whole. I'm I'm set free. free. Don't that don't that sound a whole lot better than all that other yin yang you've been talking? So anytime them thoughts come to your head that you broke, don't say it. Say just the opposite of what you're thinking. Change the channel. Well, I tried that and it didn't work. Well, you stupid. Because you wasn't supposed to try it. 
You were supposed to do it. All right? Now, Colossians chapter 3. What? She falling asleep. Your head nodding? Huh? There must be something about that row right there. Spirit of sleep all on that row. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to help y'all out. I'm going to keep y'all y'all up. Hallelujah. All right, everybody got it? Colossians 3 and 1. Listen, I'm almost done. It says, if then you were raised with Christ... Seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Listen to this one. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. So, in other words, God has given us the ability to set our minds on things where? Above, not on things where? On the earth. Most of the trouble that we have in our life is thinking about stuff on the earth. Everybody say to this week, money. Money, stuff, stuff, and things. And things. Most of us worry about that kind of stuff. Yeah, but that's what God said don't worry about. Yeah. Let me show you something. Go to Matthew chapter 6. He just told us we could set our minds. I'm going to show you a, a man, I'm going to show you a secret here. That when you run out of here, you're going to be so blessed. Go to Matthew chapter 6 and I want you to go to verse... Oh, go to, go to 33. Huh? Who said 30? Oh, okay. Most of us have taken that one scripture, verse 33, and we've made a whole doctrine and a religion out of it. Instead of adding verse 34, which actually gives you a principle and a revelation about the verse preceding. Now listen to this. The room, the room, the room, the room. He says this, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. But he doesn't stop there. The next word beginning that begins verse 34 says what? Therefore. Well, what's it there for? It's there for the preceding verse because he says, therefore, do not what? Worry. So the thing that will keep you from seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness is what? Worry. Worry keeps you from seeking. Well, say it again. Worry keeps you from seeking. Most of us in here will leave here this morning and we'll have it all. Oh, I want to please God. I want to do this for God. I want to please God. I'm all amped up. I'm all hyped up. And all of a sudden, the first thing that the enemy will hit you with is worry. Yeah. Worry about what? He don't care what you worry just as long as you worry. And he said worrying will add not one cubit to your life. It does nothing. I guarantee you, anybody remember what you was worried about this time last year? No. And next year you won't be worried, you won't know what you was worried about today. Most of us next week you won't know what you've been worried about today. Unless you are a constant worrier and then God, and then the enemy will have you worried about the same thing every day. Yes, you will. He'll constantly remind you of your deficiencies. And he'll have you thinking about how deficient you are and how God can't bless a deficient person. Change the channel. Therefore, do not worry about... Uh-oh, look at there. About what? Tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things, sufficient for the day... I want you to get that. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. I, I want to say something. And I hope you can, you can catch this. With God, your tomorrow is today. Amen. Say it again. With God... Your tomorrow is today. 
That's why he says in Psalm 118, 24, this is the day. Let me give you something else and I'm going to close this thing out. If you're sitting here this morning and you said things like this, God's going to bless me. God's going to deliver me. He's going to set me free. Evidently, there's a scripture that you have not read in the Bible. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. All right. Verse 6, chapter 6, verse 2. For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, listen, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. That does not just speak to you going to heaven. That word salvation in that scripture, in the Greek, comes from the word sozo, S-O-Z-O, which is all-inclusive. It also means health, deliverance, prosperity. All of those things are attached to salvation. So when you talk about salvation, anybody ever been to McDonald's and you got one of them combos and you looked in your bag and there wasn't no fries, and you ask the, the lady at the, at the uh, counter, do fries come with that? Well, when salvation is in question, you need to tell the devil, healing come with that. Come on now. Prosperity come with that. I can sit here this morning and ask how many people are going to heaven. Everybody raise your hand. Well, let me tell you something. Along with you going to heaven, prosperity comes with that. Yeah. Healing comes with that. Yeah. Deliverance comes with that. Yeah. And if you're not experiencing those things, your salvation has been received incomplete. Oh, oh, yeah. So again, think about McDonald's. I bet, I bet you, I guarantee you, if you got a combo and you got home and wasn't no fries in that bag, you'd be right up back at McDonald's and say, hey, I ain't get my fries. Well, it's the same thing you need to tell the devil if you're, if you're struggling, waiting to receive something. You need to tell the devil, I got my healing now. I got my prosperity now. But it won't, listen, but it won't happen until you open up your mouth. You, you, you talk mean and nasty to everybody else but the devil. You walk around here and cuss everybody out. But when it comes to the devil, well, the devil just the devil just been on my trail. Well, you need to turn turn around and tell him get off your trail. He belongs under your feet. If he's following you, it could be you and him going in the same direction. Everybody say this one word with me. Say now. now. Say it like you mean it if you want to go home. Say now. now. Uh huh. Say now. I don't know whether you want to go home or whether you really want it now. 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 Say that with me. I want it now. Faith is always now. Faith is never tomorrow. God said when Lazarus was dead and Mary and Martha said, my brother would have lived if you had been here. And Jesus' answer was this, I am the resurrection. Not I was, not I'm going to be, but I am the resurrection. Whatever you need Jesus to be in your life, he am. Not good English, but I bet you remember when you leave out here. Pastor Jones said, he am. Amen, and I is. Everybody say, I am blessed.